Hey now, my YouTube peeps! Mallory and I are going to show you how I crackle paint a piece of furniture. This is a, a big wardrobe that's on its side. I took the doors off. Um, I have one of the doors lying up here right now. Sorry about the glare. I just put some paper down on the side of this, of the, um, of the piece. I'm just you don't the beauty of this kind of finish is that you you don't have to do a lot of prep you don't have to worry a lot like here I've got some um oh this was um let me call that adhesive from a piece of tape that I had put around this thing a long time ago you know I'm not even worrying about trying to get it off I mean all I'm doing is I'm hitting it a little bit with a with a straight edge razor just to kind of scrape some of it off and that's all I mean that's all, all I got to do I don't even need to sand this crackle finish paint sorry about that I'm out of frame crackle finish paint is one of the easiest most forgiving faux finish projects you're ever going to try um, and uh, you know you don't I don't have to do anything. I mean, I can scrape it up a little bit if I want to. I'm going to wipe it down with the kitchen sponge. All this is up here being weird. You don't, don't even need to worry about it. But the only thing I do try to do is I try to avoid my hardware. So I'm going to be extremely careful when I paint around this and when I paint around my hinges. I don't want the white paint on the, you know, on the patina. Um, I took the uh, very, very super cool... Um, hinges, uh, not hinges, handles off, you know, each door. So anyhow, I'm just kind of going to scrape this up a little bit uh, just to get off bits and pieces of junk. I'm going to wipe it down with my sponge and then I am going to show you step one. Okay, so here is the door. It has been scraped and wiped down. I am absolutely um, not worried about all the little weirdnesses like that. Don't worry about it. It actually enhances the final the final uh, situation. Now, what I'm going to do, I've got this, whoops, this large paintbrush that I'm going to use to paint, you know, the big surfaces. But anywhere that I've, I have to deal with something that I'm not going to take off, I will go ahead and, and do it with this small brush. Now, I'm not going to do this underside. It's unfinished anyway. That's, you'll never see. But I am going to finish this edge, this kind of bull-nosed edge, it's going to be finished around down here. And I'm even going to finish it to the inside a little bit on this one, yeah. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to finish um, this part and all the way around, um, which is the same as the top there, um, in the crackle paint. But all of this inside I'm going to do in a, um, in a pink... Uh, semi-gloss. So what I've done is I've hung I've hung this edge over so it'll be easy for me to get crackle paint around to here. Then when I flip it over I'll crackle paint the other side of this as well as the inside of the cabinet. So, so to start I think I'm going to go ahead and take, oh incidentally I'm using the Sherwin-Williams Faux Impressions Crackle latex finish in clear, which is, I think, the only color it came in. They're discontinuing this. I bought the last four uh, quarts that they had at my local Sherman Williams, which should last me through every bit of furniture I own. So, and this, I've stirred this up. Um, I stirred it 88 times times four because I'm completely OCD when it comes to counting things, and 88 is my favorite number, and if I can, anything I can divide by four, if I can't, if instead of doing a full eight, 88s, I did four. I'm weird. Deal with it. Okay. Over here, I am going to now just hit this. Let's see if I can do this. Yeah. Just kind of paint my glaze stuff around it. Just like that. Not going to be too OCD about it. If I was, I would take this little lock. Um, face off, but I'm not going to. And I'll paint far enough out that it'll be easy to to hit it with, uh, I won't hit it when I'm painting it with the bigger one. So I'll just paint kind of around here 
and get it all up into there. Basically, a crackle glaze is, um, it's, uh, you could do it with glue. I mean, you don't have to buy these crackle finishes, but they just, I don't know, they seem to last better than, I've tried it just using glue and it doesn't seem to be as efficient. So anyhow, I've got that painted on. And I will go around and I'm going to do the same thing with each, with each of the two hinges. And then I'm just going to show you. Um, I'm going to go ahead and um, I'm going to take off some of the glaze that happens to be on my stirrer stick. I'm going to put my stirrer stick back here out of the way. And then I'll just show you. It's simple. All you do is you just you paint it like you're painting anything else. Not particularly thick, not particularly thin. You just paint it on. Then after I get this whole thing painted, I will wait at least an hour and then I'm going to come back with my single top coat of semi-gloss paint. You can use flat paint as well. I like to use semi-gloss. So let me get this okay, painted and I'll show you a little just my, one of my little techniques for painting. When I, if I don't want to paint the um, top of this, which I don't, I don't paint back and forth over this lip. I paint, I pull my, in this case, case crackle glaze, but we're going to call this paint. I pull it forward so that I don't get, um, you know, anything running down this other edge. If I went back and forth, I'd get it on the edge. So anyway, you can just see that you just use a nice, long strokes um, and just you're just giving it one one coat I also um, I painted that a little uh, decoration there with my um, with my detail brush because I didn't want a bunch of stuff um, a bunch of the glue just pooling down in all those little places in in the carving there. So this so this is basically the method that you use. So I'm going to go ahead and finish this. Okay, it is all painted up, and you can see the nice sheen and some places where it's beginning to dry a little bit. The other thing you need to watch out for when you're using cheap paintbrushes like I am is you can get the paintbrush fibers, they'll, they'll shed off onto your work. You know, I just mush, you know, grab them with my finger and pull it off and hit it a little bit again with the brush. So there we go. Now, what you want to do is you want to let this dry. Um, the instructions for this particular product is you let it dry for an, at least an hour up to four and a lot of that depends on how much moisture you're dealing with in your air but you want it definitely dry dry to the touch before you come back and and uh, put your your coat your top coat on so I will all right so we are dry to the touch and now it's been about two hours I've opened my paint that I'm going to use on the top. The, it's called Antique Night Dress. And this is all you do. You just just slap it on. Go away, dog. Dog says he doesn't want to go away. Now, here's the deal with this. When you stroke on the paint, you don't want to overlap too much. So in other words, like I'll go ahead and put it on over here on this section, getting it around to this other side over here, just going. You don't want to work the paint too much. <clears throat> and see, because look what happens. It starts to crackle up almost immediately. So if you start overworking it, you're going to kind of mess up your crackles. So you kind of have to you kind of have to work fast, paint into the previously painted. So you're going to pull the paint down into the previously painted section, like so. You can um, you can also um, of course airless spray this on if you want to, and you're not going to get all of these brush marks that way. Personally, I like the brush marks. I think it adds to it. Here's my paint again. And 
So I'm just going to pull it down into the previously painted section, working kind of quickly. And in this way I'm going to, now see I've kind of messed that up. I'll go back and hit that again um, on another coat. I normally only do one coat, but if it's drying real quickly like this is, I, I may go back and do a little touch up later. So I'm going to go ahead and finish painting this and show you how it turns out. Okay, so here we go. I've got the first coat on. You can see that it's very crusty, very crackly. Looks uh, like it's been sitting outside in the weather for 15 years, which is exactly the look that we're going for. Now, another thing you can do, after this dries, you can do a second coat, um, more of a glaze. So what I will often do is I'll take a second color of white, maybe a little, you know, d either deeper or lighter, it doesn't matter. I'll mix some of that with some clear acrylic paint, like the polycrylic finish, sealer finish, and I will brush that color on on top of this color. Now, the anything you paint on top of this a second time is still going to crackle. So you'll get another layer of crackle in a slightly different tone that will show um, this other tone through it as well. So it'll give that a real nice patina when it's done. So that is, uh, that's as far as we've come. I'm probably going to let this uh, dry until tomorrow before I come back and do any more work on it. Alrighty, so I have the second um, uh, door with its first coat of crackle paint, the first one sitting over there on top of that stuff. Now I'm working my way into the inside of the cabinet. I've given uh, these three cubbies their first coat of um, this lovely, it's a light purple probably looks white. Um, I'm going to paint the entire inside of this. I will probably end up giving it three coats so that there's no show through. It'll look as if it had been, you know, sprayed on there. So I will be working on this and when I get all of this done with its first coat, I will, um, I'll work on uh, these doors again. I will give them their second coat of color that's mixed with the um, with the clear varnish. And I think what I'm going to do, I think I'm going to mix this light purple in with the clear varnish and make that the top coat for this, uh, for for the outside of the, of the piece. Um, I've got it turned on its side, and so I'm painting as much as I can reach on this side. Um, I'll give the, I'll give this, it's three coats. I'll do this the side of the of the cabinet itself then when all of that's dry I'll flip it over and that will allow me to get to the other side that I can't see I'll give that its three coats and the other side of the cabinet and um, I'll be done at that point what do you think about that bolt you and Mallory just want to tear through the house and knock stuff over like hooligans huh yeah you do they've been helping huh. yeah right all right, so this is what it looks like with a top coat of um, kind of watered down, glazed down paint. It subdues the crackle a little bit, but you know, you still see it real well. I kind of got the uh, mental image of some poor hapless woman trying to crackle paint her mother-in-law's wardrobe. And then screwing up and having to think that she could paint over it and it didn't work. And the kids are like, Mima's gonna be angry. So that, that was the look I was going for, and I think I I think I got it. So so anyhow, so this is the um this is the finished. I'm gonna take you back over here and let you see it without see, this is what it's like without the second coat. It's just a little bit too um I have crackle paint and I know how to use it looking to me. It needed to be a little more subdued. So anyhow, that's where we are okay, at. So my second door has been done. It's over there drying. It's got its second coat. First door is still there. I've just put my coat of 
Clerical finish on this side of the cabinet, the one that's facing up, obviously. Put it all the way down. I also got it, put it on these uh, foot pieces along this bottom section and onto that foot piece. You'll notice that I didn't do a lot of prep. I painted over spider webs and dirt. Okay. Um, the beauty of this kind of faux finish, the um, the crackle faux finish, is that the more character you're, pa you're painting over, the better. It's not like these inner shelves that just got their second coat of paint. You can see they're streaky because they're drying. Those you want to um, be a little more careful with because you want the paint to look smooth. But this crackle stuff, the crustier the better. So, um, that is where we are. I think, let's see, I'm going to... I'm going to turn this way and I am, I'm going to face my open window and I'm going to face you. Okay, um, and I'm going to wipe my nose on my shirt because I have no class. Anyhow, um, I, um, I'm going to stop at this point, um, this part of the show and tell, DIY, whatever you want to call this. Um, and I'm going to go ahead and upload up to this point. Then um, I will come back with... I think you've seen pretty much all the steps now. So when I'm completely done and the thing is up against this wall and I've got it reloaded and looking pretty, I will come back and show you the finished product. So um, I hope you enjoyed this. If you have any questions, leave them in the down bar and I will, or leave them in the comments and I will, um, I'll attempt to, to answer them. So have a great day. Everybody be happy. And if you're not happy, try harder. Bye.